From far across the universe, a story of heroic alien dinosaur warriors fighting back against the relentless forces of evil alien dinosaur warriors. And the only way it can end, the only place it can end, is here on Earth. This is a battle 250 million years in the making. Hi, I'm Dan Larson, and this is the History of Dinosaurs. We have previously covered the Dinosaurs toy line as an oddity episode. It is quite possibly the rarest toy line ever. Check out that video for a bit more in-depth look at the toys exclusively. I'm probably wearing a different shirt in that one, but I'm not so confident that I'm willing to put money on it. Dinosaurs is a 65 episode animated series that first aired from September to December of 1987. It follows the heroic Dinosaurs who have fled their homeworld Reptilon, pursued all the way to Earth by the evil Tyrannos. Once on Earth, the Dinosaurs enlist a group of teens dubbed the Secret Scouts who help them navigate the landscape of Earth, both literally and figuratively. In exchange, the kids get to do things like ride flying motorcycles and hang out with talking dinosaur people. There is no downside. Dinosaurs is a bundle of amazingly effective, focus group proven, marketing dream come true, sellable elements. It's not just that dinosaurs are from space with dinosaur spaceships and spacesuits, but they talk, fight, and have the ability to devolve into their prehistoric, pre-evolved forms. The good guys do, anyway. And when they activate that power, they retain their intelligence and flexibility to change back to their evolved forms. The Tyrannos want that power, but the best they can muster is a devolving ray that physically does the same thing, but also devolves the brain, turning them into mindless creatures. It is, on paper, one of the greatest toy and cartoon concepts ever conceived. On paper. Dinosaurs was an international co-production of Deke Animation in Canada and, hold on to your butts, Coca-Cola Telecommunications in the United States. Coca-Cola making soda and television? Look, when you're the soda king, you do what you want. Coke had just won the Cola Wars by utilizing the new Coke Faint. They were high on caffeine and flush with original recipe cash. Dinosaurs was created by one of the most important movie producers of all time, Michael Uslan. Michael's story is a classic American tale, a boy who loved Batman amassing a collection of over 30,000 comic books while living in New Jersey, hoping to one day break into Hollywood. While attending Indiana University School of Law, he began developing a course curriculum for the legitimate study of comic books as literature, as art, as mythology, the different styles, current and future trends, the role of comics in school systems, and the psychological impacts. Serious shit. In the late 70s, he began doing legal work for various Hollywood productions. Apocalypse Now, Rocky II, Raging Bull. That work facilitated a transition into being a producer on film and television projects. When you want to get into the industry, when you're chasing a dream, you find a way. In 1979, Michael, along with Benjamin Melnicker, purchased the film rights to Batman from DC Comics. Michael wanted to bring Batman back to his darker roots, show the world a character more like what Bob Kane had introduced him as, get away from the cartoon character of the 60s live-action TV show and 70s Super Friends animated series. Every studio he pitched it to passed, looking for something more like the live-action 60s TV show and the Super Friends animated series. Michael retreated and wrote a script called Return of the Batman, which he says tonally is more in line with Frank Miller's Dark Knight Returns and existed six years prior, not that anyone's counting. Batman was officially announced as being in production in 1980, but that project still had a long way to go. Meanwhile, Michael had other ideas. Michael had a son who, like most kids, was into two things hardcore, space and dinosaurs. He liked going to the Museum of Natural History and he liked going to the planetarium. It wasn't long before Michael started to play with the two concepts based on the highly precise market research he had conducted. The name Dinosaucers was just a name. He needed more. He drew upon his comic book heritage. Those space lizards were going to need sidekicks. The Secret Scouts. Four kids helping the dinosaurs. David and Sarah were named after his kids, Paul after his brother, and Ryan after his cousin. He enlisted the help of some of his Hollywood and comic book friends to ultimately get him in touch with Joe Kubert to begin developing character designs. 
With the concept and imagery in hand, he coordinated animation production at Deke and distribution through Coca-Cola Telecommunications. It was one of the first Michael Uslan, Benjamin Melnicker productions. He wrote nearly a quarter of the episodes himself. One season, 65 episodes, and like all of the big 80s properties, a whole line of action figures. On paper. The plan, on paper, was to have a full line of action figures, play sets, standard operating procedure for any kid-focused brand launched in the 80s. Had things gone according to that plan, you probably would have seen comic books, board games, Halloween costumes, and probably a game on the ZX Spectrum. Hasbro was initially involved with the production of a line, concept images were created, but stylistically they didn't fit what the producers were looking for. No harm done except for a loss of time. Galoob acquired the license and had to hustle up to get back on a production schedule that would get toys to shelves in time to coincide with the launch of the show in September of 1987. Galoob planned to release a full line of posable 8-inch action figures, 4-foot inflatable figures, 2-inch scale figures that would be packed with the dinosaur spaceships, and a full lava dome playset. They hustled, they did their best, they got preview images out ahead of the holiday season so orders could be placed, but then the Ishtar hit the fan. A sharknado of events titanic to dinosaurs before it could ever masters of the universe. In 1982, Coca-Cola purchased Columbia Pictures. Columbia were responsible for the 1987 film Ishtar, which became the fourth worst box office release at the time of all time. It made $14 million worldwide against a budget of $55 million. That's enough to Pluto Nash a whole studio. And it did. Coca-Cola stockholders started getting anxious. Everybody was having second thoughts. Why didn't they just stick to bubbly caffeinated brown syrup? They just recovered from the New Coke debacle. Wink. <laughs> now they're hemorrhaging Ishtar money. <laughs> Coca-Cola telecommunications lasted about one year. Coca-Cola made the decision to spin off all of their entertainment holdings to TriStar. Unfortunately, that meant that all existing properties were terminated and or the responsibility of the new owners. Maybe the show was good, maybe it wasn't. I can tell you as someone who watched it when it aired, I watched it when it aired. I like dinosaurs and I like spaceships and also cartoons. This was right in my content consumption wheelhouse. I also didn't have the critical tools as a 10 year old to determine whether or not it was good by artistic standards. The first season of Dinosaurs had already run its course before Toy Fair 1988 when Galoob was actually able to show the prototype toys, and at that point, what was the point? Nobody's buying without a show to support the line, and nobody can guarantee that the show will ever air again. But Dinosaurs got a second life internationally. It was still airing in other markets, and a Brazilian company called Glasslit had already signed on to handle some of the international production and distribution of the toys. Glass Leet had manufactured and distributed toys for Thundercats, Star Wars, Bionic 6, A-Team, Masters of the Universe, Karate Kid, and Rambo. So when Galoob dropped the whole thing, the molds were already licensed by Glass Leet, who still had customers looking for toys. Glass Leet produced five of the eight figures, and they are super rare, as we covered in our video, is Dinosaurs the rarest toy line? Spoiler alert, it's in the running. They are super rare, and even crappy condition pieces go for Brewster's Millions prices. Eight episodes of Dinosaurs were released on four VHS tapes in 1994, and that's it. They're super rare, just like the toys. They've never been released on DVD and only occasionally show up on streaming services. Sony purchased Columbia Pictures in 1989, and that's where the rights sit today. Sony has no current plans to do anything with it. In the meantime, Michael Uslan became one of the biggest movie producers in the world. Batman finally came out in 1989 and changed the complexion of the character as a cinematic entity forever. Michael went on to produce every single Batman movie that has been made since, including those based on Batman the Animated Series,
Kings, and a lot of other stuff, like Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, Fish Police, Swamp Thing, Catwoman, National Treasure, Constantine, The Spirit, Teen Titans Go to the Movies, and more. In 2018, Michael took a swing at a dinosaur's revival through Lion Forge Comics, written by Usland himself, featuring artwork by Andrew Peepoy and a few others to close out the final issue. It doesn't look or feel like the original series and, for the most part, was dismissed by fans of the original show. A bitter transmorphers when what they wanted was Bumblebee. The spirit of the dinosaurs is kept alive by the fandom online. One person in particular has led the charge and kept the fire burning all these years. Hans Geyer, aka Master Turtle Customs on Instagram, has for the last five years been digitally recreating, 3D printing, and hand painting very limited run reproductions of all the original action figures. He even went a step further and designed and produced all of the figures that weren't manufactured. It is a fan effort that was targeted at potentially acquiring the license and releasing a classics line of figures, a revival like so many other 80s brands that have had similar modern update treatments. All the work has been done, all he needs is the legal go-ahead to start production, which Sony has declined to grant him. But that doesn't stop you from checking out his amazing work and appreciating that level of commitment. Despite having a full season of 65 episodes and being created by one of the most prominent Hollywood producers of all time, Dinosaurs was a short-lived obscurity within the larger scene of 80s cartoons and toy lines. For those that knew it, they loved it. For everyone else, well, now you know. Thanks for watching. Please hit like, hit subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Thank you very much to those of you who already are. If you're in the position to help the channel grow, please visit our Patreon at patreon.com slash toygalaxy or become a YouTube channel member. Both Patreon and YouTube channel membership have the same exclusive content, so choose your own adventure. Please share this video and let us know in the comments down below if you've ever heard of dinosaurs. If, like me, you think there's never been a better time for a team of spacefaring, anthropomorphic dinosaur people to come back and save the day from a team of evil spacefaring, anthropomorphic dinosaur people. I do not agree. Now's the time. Cut.